Have you ever wondered what makes you, a tree, or a little bug all living things? It's a fascinating question, isn't it? All these different things, from the smallest insect to the tallest tree, and of course us humans, we're all considered living things. But what exactly does that mean? Well, living things, or organisms as we often call them, have some common characteristics. For starters, we all grow. A tiny seed can sprout and become a towering tree. A small puppy grows into a big dog, and you, you're growing every single day. Living things also reproduce. Plants produce seeds, animals have babies, and even bacteria divide to make more of themselves. We all respond to our environment too. Think about how you pull your hand away when you touch something hot, that's your body responding to its environment. And finally, all living things need food and water to survive. It's our fuel, our source of energy. So, whether it's a tiny ant or a giant elephant, we're all living things because we share these characteristics. But what makes us humans special among all living things? Well, let's dive right into it. First off, we humans are one of the few species that walk upright on two legs. This is known as bipedalism. Walking upright frees up our hands to carry objects and use tools, another unique human characteristic. Speaking of tools, human beings are renowned for their ability to create and use a wide variety of tools, from simple stone axes to complex machines like computers and spacecraft. We've even used our tools to explore beyond our Earth and into the vastness of space. Then there's our complex communication skills. We use an intricate language system with thousands of different languages worldwide, each with its own words, grammar and syntax. This allows us to express abstract ideas, share knowledge and build societies. So, these unique characteristics set us apart from other living things on our planet. And that, my friends, is what makes us human. Did you know that all of us, including plants and animals, are made up of tiny building blocks called cells? These microscopic units are so small that they're invisible to the naked eye, yet they hold the secret to life itself. Every living thing is teeming with countless cells, each one busy doing its job to keep us alive and well. Imagine a bustling city with everyone working together, and you'll get an idea of what's happening inside each and every cell. Cells are like the bricks in a building, the basic unit that makes up every living organism. They come together to form tissues, which then form organs, and eventually an entire organism. And just like bricks, not all cells are the same. They can differ in shape, size and function based on where they are and what they need to do. So every living thing, big or small, is made up of these tiny cells. Scene script. Ever wondered what would happen if you put an onion in salt water? Let's find out. Picture this. You're in your kitchen and you've just dropped a slice of onion into a bowl of salty water. What you're about to witness is plasmolysis, a fascinating biological process that's all about water movement within cells. You see, onion cells, like all plant cells, are filled with a watery substance called cytoplasm. When you plunk that onion into salt water, a hypertonic solution, something incredible happens. The salt in the water causes the water inside the onion cells to move out, a process known as osmosis. Why does this happen? Well, water loves balance. It moves from areas of lower salt concentration to areas of higher salt concentration to create equilibrium. As the water leaves the onion cells, the cells lose their turgidity or stiffness. The result? The onion cells shrivel up, almost like they're wilting. That's why the onion cells shrivel up when we put it in salt water. Remember those tiny cells we talked about? Well, when they work together, they form tissues, organs, and even whole body systems. Imagine a team of builders. Each builder, or cell, has a specific task. When they combine their efforts, they can build a wall, or in our case a tissue. Tissues are essentially a group of cells that work together to perform a specific function. Like bricks in a wall, each cell contributes to the overall structure and function of the tissue. Now, imagine many walls coming together to form a house. In our body, tissues combine to form an organ. Each organ has a unique role in the body. For instance, your heart, a muscular organ, pumps blood around the body, while your brain, a nervous organ, controls most of the body's functions. When several organs work together, they form a body system. Let's take the digestive system as an example. It starts with your mouth and teeth. Chewing is super important because it's where digestion begins. By breaking down food into smaller pieces, we're making it easier for the rest of the digestive system to do its job. Once you swallow, the food travels down the esophagus and into the stomach, where it's mixed with stomach acids. 
Then it moves to the small intestine where nutrients are absorbed and finally to the large intestine where water is reabsorbed before the waste is expelled. So, you see, each organ in this system has a different task, but they all work together to break down food and extract the nutrients our bodies need. Just like the builders, cells, tissues, organs and body systems all work together to build and maintain our bodies. Each level is made up of the level below it, and each contributes to the functioning of the level above. So, from a single cell to a complex body system, everything works together to keep us healthy and active. Did you know not all cells are the same? In fact, some are quite special. Just